Good morning and welcome to the weekend. Here we are, Saturday. For some, it's Saturday morning, and others, it's Saturday night. But we are glad that you've joined us for another Discipleship Empowerment Word. And trust that the Lord would use the Word that we're going to study today to encourage us, to strengthen us, to build us up, and to draw us a little closer to His heart. You know, when we can understand words and what the words mean, oh, how they can minister to us in a powerful way. And I just thank you for joining us. My name is James Paul Humphreys, and we're just, I don't know, so excited that what the Lord can do and is doing during these troubling times, there is a move of God that's happening around the world in spite of all the challenges that our, the world is facing. God is still on His throne. Amen. And so we're glad that you've joined us today. We're looking at the word renewal. And we've only done one verse on the word renewal, and that was Psalm 51, verses 10 to 13. But today we're going to move on to Psalm 103, verse 5, as we talk about this whole word of renewal. And renewal is so important because many times the authors in various books wrote down this word renewal. They were coming to the Lord and saying, Lord, we need to be renewed. What's going on is not right. And so it's a it's an actual an inward reflection when, on a person's life when they look at this word renewal. And then not only do they look at their own life, but they also look at the life of, of fellow disciples or the church or the community or whatever they're involved in, whatever we are working with, there's this idea of renewal. And it means to bring back to newness, to reestablish a relationship to become a new creation, to give new life to a place or to be restored. And I think that's what so often the writers are saying to us. Come on now, let's get renewed. You know, as disciples, we need to be renewed. We need to be renewed daily. We need to be filled daily. We need to be anointed daily. That God would use us as a channel for His glory. So in Psalms 103, <clears throat> verse 5, he writes this to us, and he says, Who satisfies your mouth with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles? So here, the idea of the mouth again is not only what goes out, but also what comes in. So he's saying, who satisfies your mouth? Who does that? Who provides for your food? Now, again, we can look at it physically or we can look at it spiritually and we will probably can do both. But God is a God who not only uh, provides for us physically, but here, I think he wants to show that not only will God uh, give you physical strength, but he also he will give you emotional strength and spiritual strength. And that's why the psalmist says, ask this question, who satisfies your mouth with good things? Who does that? And of course the answer would be is God. Then because of that, so that your youth is renewed like eagles. So he's saying, you know, because you've been satisfied, now that you got food, now that you've got energy, you can rise up like an easel, eagle and fly above the storms, fly above the situations. And I think that's unique because that's the challenge that the David is saying to as he's writing this psalm, who does this? Who is the one that energizes us? Who is the one that gives us life? Well, it's God Almighty Himself. And so because of that, we need to come into His presence each day and let Him renew us. Let Him, you know, like take the car to the car wash and get it clean, both inward and outwardly. Amen. So that it will be like new again. And here, but it's using the illustration that will be renewed like eagles. That's what is so critical. There's a renewing process. It's like sanctification. That sanctification is a, a daily process that we come to the Lord, we confess our sins, and we, we forget for, uh, confess our transgressions, our, our iniquities, all those things. And as we are doing that, it's renewing us from the inside out. I used to do a lot of counseling. And one of the biggest things that I tried to keep telling people when I was counseling them, that, you know, you can change the outward, you can change your mind. But the thing is, what you really need to change your heart. 
Because the Holy Spirit, you know, when the Holy Spirit wants to work with you, He's got to get through the outward garbage. <laughs> he's got to penetrate through your thinking and the way you feel that things should be done. Then the Holy Spirit has to penetrate into your heart and take up residency there. And then once He does that, and once you've accepted that, then that change in the heart, you know what it does? It changes our thinking, and then it changes our outward actions and expression. So a lot of times people come to me and they've got habits and everything and they, they throw them down in a physical way and say, you know, we're, I'm going to change. But unless the heart is changed, the outward won't change. And so the psalmist is saying here, when you eat of the Lord, when you eat of the things of the Lord has fed you and it's changed you in your heart, you're going to be like an eagle who can rise up above the storms, who can rise up above the challenges even though that they seem to be great around you. Well, he goes, we go on over into Isaiah. And of course, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, is going to pick up on the same thing that David said. But now, just hundreds of years later, we got Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, where he's saying, but those who wait on the Lord. So again, the previous verse, those who feed on the Lord, those who recognize the Lord feeds them, like David said, shall rise up an eagle. But now, here, he goes on again, Isaiah, and says, But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength, and they shall mount up with wings of eagles, they shall run and not be weary, they shall walk and not faint. And the part I like about here is that it goes on and uses the word renew again. You know, renewing is taking in. But it's also cleaning off. It's making new. It's replacing that which was old with that which is new. Jesus had come and fulfilled the old covenant. And now he was giving us a new covenant. So that we could be renewed in him. And we'll talk more about that. But Isaiah was trying to tell that when the, when you're going through tr struggles and trials. If you go up, up to the previous verses, look what it says. He says in verse 29. He gives power to the weak, and to those who have no might, he increases their strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. So he's saying, look, this is what's happening. I understand Isaiah saying, you're, you're feeling weak. You're feeling sometimes that there is just no strength. You're feeling weary. But let me tell you that when you come, and you begin to wait on the Lord. I think not only wait on the Lord, but also get active again in the Lord. You know, waiting on the Lord, the Lord shows us things and guides us, and then He takes us into action. Waiting always opens the door for activity. Why? How can you say that? Because if the waiting doesn't open the door to activity... Why do you need to mount up on eagle's wings? Why do you need to run? Why do you need to walk? See, the waiting gets you ready and renews you so that you can begin to be able to do something. I was talking to a pastor last night and he said, you know, he's starting to get out and start talking to people and he's starting to feel more refreshed. And I said, you know, a lot of times that's like living water. Like if you have the water in your well and you're not using it, it goes stagnant. It can even dry up. But if you take and begin to use that living water, it will renew you. That's the whole thing is about being a channel for Jesus Christ. Is that the renewal process is a flowing process. It's a changing process. There is something that's happening. And so if you're just remaining stagnant or not moving or not going or not coming into the presence of the Lord, then nothing is going to change. But then he goes, that's why he says, those who wait. So he's telling the young men, he's telling the youth, he's telling the weak, he's telling all of those who are struggling, hey, it starts first by coming and waiting on the Lord. And again, this waiting on the Lord is not waiting in our time schedule or in our you know, well, Lord, I got five minutes, you got five minutes, and so let's go for it. Well, that's a good start, but sometimes waiting on the Lord is could even be just going for a walk. 
It could be going to the place where you're just uh, uh, reflecting on what God is doing. It's like David said, it's like meditating. You know, looking into the Word and letting the Word look into you. And letting the Word build strength in you. Moving you from being weary to being strong. To being one who has fallen down to one who rises up. That's what the Bible is trying to teach us. So that's why he says, but when you wait, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew. It says shall renew. It doesn't say maybe renew. It says shall renew. Here's a unique promise that we can see from the Lord that he's giving us something that he has promised shall happen. And I love it because it's not the same. It might happen. It shall happen. If we will just come to the Lord, spend some time on Him, we shall be renewed. And I, and I, as I counsel people, if they would just do that, but a lot of people don't want to do that. It's amazing how many people you can counsel them, you can instruct them, and and, and advise them, and they just go on the same way they were the way before, because they won't wait on the Lord. They want instant gratification, instant happening. But sometimes you need to wait. You need to wait. Sometimes there is that time when you, you're, you're not always seeing the end product. Can you imagine Noah? God told him to build an ark. And in many ways, he had to wait and keep building and building and building and building. And probably a good year of building and building, you know, waiting on the promises of God, that God was going to do what he said to do, and all of a sudden everything came together. The waiting was over, and now the event was going to happen. There was something that was going to be renewed on the earth. And so, here it is. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. You know, if you're feeling weak, wait on the Lord. He'll renew your strength. If you're feeling weak, or you're weary, wait on the Lord. He shall give you strength. Then he goes on and tells us, they then, once they've waited upon the Lord, and that's the thing I want us to get. How to say this in a loving way, but we need to say it. Come on now, we need to get active. Active. We need to take that which God gives us, in whatever fashion it is, and get doing something with it. The waiting upon the Lord is like filling up the gas tank. You know, when you're at the gas station and the gas tank was empty and you have to wait there for a little while until it gets filled up. But then when it's full, the reason you fill up a gas tank so you can drive your car. And the reason why you wait on the Lord is so that you can begin to go forward and do something. There needs to be a doing. I'm amazed at how many people tell me well, God can never use me. God never works through me. God, you know, and sometimes when I hear that, I want to back up because I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, oh God, don't send down a bolt of lightning at this time because that's not true. God will use anyone who will wait upon him. Amen. Anyone. Anyone. I don't care what kind of condition. You may be in the hospital. You may be in a wheelchair. You may not be able to do you may not be able to speak well. You might have, you know, stuttering and all kinds of things. You may have physical problems. You'll have, I mean, the list goes on and on. You may have those things. But I, agree, I believe that when you wait on the Lord, He then gets you ready so that you can rise up, that you can begin to move forward, and that you begin to be able to do what He has called you to do so that you would be like an eagle that can mount up. And this idea, I love this idea of mount up. You may not, you know, you think of the idea of mounting up as of getting on a horse. This is not the idea here. The idea of mounting up is that the eagle comes up towards the edge of the nest and he opens up his or her wings and then the wind comes underneath the eagle and begins to lift it. And as the eagle begins to fly, and it begins to circle, and it begins, God begins to mount it up higher and higher and higher and higher. And it's the wind of God 
that is raising up the person that they can mount up and begin to fly even higher. And that's what God wants to do. He's just saying, you know, spend some time with me. Then come on over to the edge of the nest. Spread your wings out. Get ready. Because I'm going to breathe forth with the wind and the power of the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to lift you up. And then he goes on. He says, not only am I going to lift you up, but those who are running, don't worry. You won't be weary because I'm going to empower you with strength. Those that are walking, don't worry that you're going to faint because I'm going to come there and give you the energy to keep going forward. You know what I mean? And I think that's what it all is all about. You know, when you feel weak, when you feel faint, put out the wings. Spend some time with the Lord. Begin to meditate. Begin to come into His presence. And I believe as you do, there's a renewal that's going on. A renewal that God wants to begin to work in your life. You know, I don't think God just wants to leave us alone in a closet or in a dark room or in a back pew someplace. I believe God, and you may not agree with me, that's why I believe God wants to use everybody. I believe God can use children. I believe God can use young people. I believe God can use the young adults, the middle-aged adults. I believe God can use the retired senior citizens. I believe God can use anyone. But the problem is, people don't believe that God can use them. Come on now. It's time to get away from the traps of the enemy, the lies of the devil. And I say, well, God can never use me. That is a lie. That is a lie. Tell Satan. That's a lie. Speak it out of your mouth. That's a lie. And then to get into the God's word and spend some time in his presence. And then as you spend time, you will begin to be renewed. And that renewal will make you like an eagle. It will make you like an athlete that can run. It will make you like a person that can walk. You may, whatever it may be, it gives you the power to do something. Oh, if the, if the, you know, the two billion Christians that are in the world. Can you imagine? There's 7 billion people in the world and about 2 billion, close to 3 billion of them are Christians of some form or fashion. If they would just rise up and start living the word and start doing the word as a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ, the world would be dramatically changed. Dramatically changed. We need to rise up. Whatever we're doing, there is some place that we can get involved, something that we can do. And it doesn't mean it has to be a lot. And it doesn't mean that people will uh, see what you're doing. But be about the doing part. Because the waiting gets you ready to empower you, to renew you, to bring you into the place of renewal. That's what renewal is. People say, well, we, we, need, we need a renewal in the church. Yes, the renewal brings us to action. And that's how, when people say, how do we know when we're, when we're having revival in that? Because you're going to see lives change. You're going to see people doing things differently than they have done it before. Amen? And that's what renewal is. Whatever God has given you the ability to do it, do more of it. Don't faint. Don't become weary. Just keep going. Just keep going forward. Keep planting. Keep planting. Keep planting. You know, it just keep doing, even though you don't always understand. We have an, a, a, another exciting opportunity of, of this whole idea of doing and planting. You know, we've been talking for months now about David's song. What we're looking at now, we may be able to plant and do some of the same things that we did over here in and, and, and the Steinbach area and now go over to Winkler and, and Carmen and Morden and continue to plant seed over there. Just keep doing and it's amazing what God will do. He will take that and cause other people to rise up. Take that and cause other people to go forward. Oh, if, if we would just take, you know, as, as the Lord said to Moses. When Moses was complaining, Moses was complaining and he was complaining, you know, I stutter, I can't, you know, how, how are they going to believe? And then finally God says, what Moses, what do you got on your hand? Well, I got a staff. Okay, I'll use that. Is it okay I use that, Moses? Can I just take what you've got and use it? And don't worry about what you don't yet have? <laughs> 
So the thing is, as you wait upon the Lord, what is it that you got? And then give it to the Lord and say, yeah, Lord, go ahead and use that. Whether you're a musician or whether you're a preacher or a teacher or a laborer, whatever it is, whatever you got, give it to the Lord, wait upon the Lord, and He will renew you like an eagle. He will renew you like an athlete. He will renew you so that you can go forward. Amen? That's what He wants to do. Well, in Lamentations chapter 5, verse 21, we get this word renewal again. And of course, we know that this is this is Jeremiah lamenting or weeping over or struggling with what was going on with the people of Israel. You know, I think some of the prophets, one of the, the thing is they weren't really that concerned about the whole world around them. A lot of the prophets, I don't know if you understand this, but a lot of prophets were, were prophesying about the people of God. Can you think about that for a minute? The struggle sometimes wasn't the things that was going on out there. The struggles was with the people of God themselves. You know, is that this could be the same today? Is there a need to be a prophetic word that's given to the people of God? Well, Jeremiah is lamenting what's going on with, with Israel, and with Jerusalem, and, and with the people of God. He's lamenting and saying, okay, come on now. There needs to be a renewal. There needs to be a renewal. And he says in Lamentations 21, or chapter 5, 21, he says, Turn us back to you, O Lord, and we will be restored. Renew our days as of old. Unless you have utterly rejected us and are very angry with us. See, the Lord, he's saying, if you have utterly rejected us and, and it's all over, okay. But he knows that that's not true. One thing about God, there is always more grace always more mercy, always more love, if we will turn back. If we will turn back. You know, those that are in our community, in that community that have walked away, that, have, that have, had, have tasted of the new wine and have gone and moved away, you know, it saddens my heart. But you know, there's still that same door that they walked out as the same door that if they would just come back come back and do what be renewed and you know what god will renew that's why he said just turn turn us back to you O lord and and he's and and jeremiah is saying turn us back to you O lord get our attention turn us back and if there's a, a prophetic word that needs to be said today the church needs to turn back to the lord now i'm really going to get in trouble People are going to say to me, even pastors might say, well, who made you God today? I just know it. I, the reason why I know it, because it's happening in my life. God is trying to turn me back to the things of Him. Trying to turn me back to the basic gospels, uh, the gospel truth of the Word of God. Trying to turn us back. And unfortunately, it's hard to do a U-turn. But that's what we need to have. We need to be praying, oh God, turn us back. Turn us back into the, into the wind. So that the sails will be full of wind. Turn us back as the eagle so that when we spread our wings, the wind of the Holy Spirit will begin to lift us up. Turn us back. It says, turn us back, O Lord, and we will be restored. See, he knows where restoration comes from. It comes from the Lord. So he's saying, O Lord, turn us back. As we turn back, we are going to begin to be restored. And restored is being renewed. And then he goes on, renew our days as of old. It's so important that we, re as that when we have spent time with the Lord, we know, you know, there's a lot of things that we know, but for some reason, we don't let it get into understanding and knowledge. We know there needs to be renewal. We know that there needs to be a restoration. But for some reason, we won't turn back. We won't turn into the wind. You know, and that idea of, you know, if you're a sailor, turning into the wind is when the boat really begins to move. And it's interesting that when you turn into the wind, there is a lot of friction in that. There's a lot of struggles and there's a lot of challenge. And there is a lot of pressure that's going on in the sailboat. But when you turn into the wind, the wind will take you. As an eagle, when you expand your wings and you turn into the wind, 
it will begin to raise you up. When you turn back to the Lord, He will restore you. And then as you open up yourself to the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit, He will raise you up. He will send you up higher and higher and higher. And when you go higher, you know what you do? What happens when you go higher? You get bigger vision. You will see things that you haven't seen it before. He wants to lift you up so you can go higher. You know, and I've never thought all this through one day, but I've been thinking about, as I said, you know, can you imagine with this little David song? You know, we said, okay, Lord, we, we, we will fly with this a little bit and we will get, you know, 2,500 2, copies and we'll try to figure out what to do with them. But as we turned into the wind and God began to raise things up and bring people together. Do you know, as of this week, we've gone through 150, no, 147,000 copies? That's what turning into the wind, because when you turn in the wind, the ego begins to be lifted up and you get to see a bigger vision. You get to see things in a greater way than never before. And that's why we need to, as God's children, as Jeremiah was lamenting over the people of God, over the city of God and the people of God, he's saying, oh God, turn us back. That you will not forsake us, but turn us back. And as we turn back, O oh Lord, you will restore us. As we turn back, O oh Lord, you will renew us. You know, our nature is to walk in sin. But what Christ wants us to do is to walk in Him. And by walking in Him, there's a restoration and a renewal. And that restoration and renewal gets us ready for flying, for running, and for walking. Did you hear that? That restoration and renewal purpose is to get us ready for flying, get us ready for running, and get us ready for walking in our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for this opportunity to hear even from uh, the Psalms, to hear from Isaiah as he's prophesied, to hear from Jeremiah as he laments, and Lord, as his heart is burdened, that people would just turn back. Father, my own heart has been burdened when I see what's going on with your people. Oh God, bring us back to the place of restoration. Bring us back to the place of renewal. Bring us back to the place, oh God, that as you renew, as we wait upon you and you renew us and you restore us, that Lord God, we will begin to fly. And that we will begin to run. And that we will begin to walk. Oh God, that there would be a movement, a powerful movement. That last day movement where the Holy Spirit, you Holy Spirit, would be poured out and touch people's lives. There would be a renewing from the inside out. And Lord, it would just bust out onto the highways and byways. And Lord, that you would be glorified. And so Father, we pray for that renewing power. We pray for that renewing strength. And that wisdom knowledge that you're going to give now. And Father, I just thank you for my brothers and sisters. I thank you for their hunger, for their desire to be renewed, for their desire to be restored. Oh God, take each one of us, and especially my life. Lord, help me to be restored. Help me to turn back from those things which I have once walked away and get back into your presence, to get back into your renewing. Lord, so that even in our latter years, those of us who are older, Lord, that we can be renewed to the place that we can fly. That we can be renewed to the place that we can run again. That we can be renewed to the place that we can continue to walk forward in your glory now. And we just give you all the thanks and praise now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Oh, God, I pray that God is going to do a powerful work in all of our lives today. Amen. So let's keep on keeping on. Get into the presence of God. Turn back into the wind and get ready to fly. Get ready to run and get ready to walk. Amen. We love you. God bless you. And Lord willing, we hope to see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye now.